couple of weeks ago, I spoke to you about fuel for the race and how important it is that we keep our spiritual tank full in order to finish the race before us, that upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And the key to maintaining calm and confidence in the midst of life's storms is to never run on empty. Then Andrew spoke to you about accountability, the pit stop in our race of a lifetime. We need to pull in from time to time and have others look us over, so to speak, and make adjustments so that we can run better. Then last week, Mark spoke about what we can do when we have a spin out, how to cope when we get distracted from the goal of the upward call of God and Christ Jesus. This morning, I'm gonna say a few words about finishing the race. Finishing well. Of first importance, of course, is to finish the race. Now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the young people in our congregation posted on their Facebook uh, page that, well, they actually said, preachers still preaching NASCAR. So I'm going to change the metaphor just a little bit this morning and I'll tell you about the 1968 Olympics. The 1968 Summer Olympics took place in Mexico City, Mexico, and John Stephen Aquari of Tanzania was one of the entrants in the marathon. That's the 26-mile race. How many here have ever run a 26-mile marathon? Anybody here? Raise your hand. How about a half marathon? Half 13 miles. Okay. I did that once. I made 11 miles, you know. How many have run um, 10 kilometers? There you go, we're getting down there. How about one mile? Anybody run one mile? <laughs> they say the first mile is the hardest, so there's still hope. So anyhow, John Stephen Aquari of Tanzania cramped up while he was running due to the high altitude of the city. He had not had an opportunity to train at such an altitude back in his home country of Tanzania. And, at the and in addition to the cramps, at the 19-kilometer mark during this 42-kilometer race, there was some jockeying for position among the runners, and he was bumped, and he fell badly, scraping his knee and dislo dislocating that joint, plus his shoulder hit the pavement very hard. He, however, continued running, finishing last, among the 57 competitors who completed the race. By the way, 75 started. The winner of the marathon, Mamo Wolde of Ethiopia, finished the marathon in two hours, 20 minutes, 26 seconds. Aquari finished it in three hours, 25 minutes, 27 seconds, when there were only a few thousand people left in this giant stadium and the sun had already set. A television crew was sent out from the medal ceremony that was already going on as a quarry neared the stadium and was there to film this last racer to finish the race. Um, can we take a look at that, that piece of video? I should have warned you. I think you saw it coming up. Here we are. A little over an hour after Mama Walde crosses the finish line, John Stephen Aquari of Tanzania approaches the stadium, the last man to complete the journey. A voice calls from within to go on, and so he goes on.
afterwards it was written, Today we have seen the young African runner who symbolizes the finest in the human spirit. A performance that gives true dignity to sport. A performance that lifts sport out of the category of grown men playing at games. A performance that gives meaning to the word courage. All honor to John Stephen Aguari of Tanzania. Perhaps the words of John Stephen Aquari epitomize all that is right in the human spirit. When asked why he did not quit, he said simply, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Did you hear what the runner was said, had said when he was interviewed and asked why he continued running? He said, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Anyone who drops out misses the glory of crossing the finish line. It's like Jesus said to his disciples, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Our Lord did not call us to begin this race of a lifetime, the upward call of God, and just leave it at that. Our Lord expects us to finish the race and to finish well. It's about finishing well. We don't want to just slide over the finish line or to crawl over the finish line. Did you notice in this video clip, a quarry was walking with a limp as he neared the stadium. But as he entered it for the final lap, he picked up the pace and began jogging again. We want to finish strong and finish well. Finishing the race of a lifetime, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, means the honorable stewardship of our lives. We have five areas for our stewardship, and they are also five outlets of power. Number one, through our life, what we are. Number two, through our lips, what we say. We can never pull a word back after it leaves us, but we can add words going forward that may dilute its bad effect if that's what happens. Number three, through our ministry. What are we doing for God and to serve God's kingdom? Number four, through our money. What we give, what we share of our financial blessings for God's purposes. And number five, through our prayers, what we claim in Christ's name. We exist temporarily through what we take, but we live forever through what we give. God has given us each a life to make a positive impact in the world. No one said it would be easy. There are moments, periods of time, when we must act with strength and courage to stand for what is right and moral. And it takes courage and strength and perseverance to stand for what is right and to sacrifice self for the sake of others for a greater good. It's not about being a wimp or wishy-washy, but taking on the mission and power of God. What's your greatest accomplishment? If you look back over your life, what are you leaving behind? What are, whatever you have received more than others, in health, in talents, in ability, in success, in a pleasant childhood, in harmonious conditions of home life. All this you must not take to yourself as a matter of course. In gratitude for your good fortune, you must render some sacrifice of your own life for another life. Those are the words of Albert Schweitzer. Famed medical doctor in Germany, concert pianist as well, known in the circles of Europe. He gave it all 
to the chagrin of his colleagues and friends who thought he was crazy, he walked away from a star-studded medical career as well as the career of a po concert pianist to become a missionary in Africa. You must not take it all to yourself as a matter of course. In gratitude for your good fortune. Sure, you built it. I know you did. And you may have done it without much help from anybody else. But if you want to build a life with the character that is grounded in the ruler of the universe, you'll share your blessings. Maybe you'll help someone else build their success and impart some godly character along with your help. What is the legacy of your life? If you want to see a harvest in one year, you will grow wheat. If you want to see a harvest in 10 years, you'll grow trees. If you want to see a harvest of a lifetime, you'll grow people. St. Paul says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Most important of all is to stay on track. You have to look yourself in the mirror every day and say, am I on the right track? The Bible teaches us that we are not perfect and holy like God our Creator. We're broken and sinful and unfit for heaven. But we can be made fit for heaven by our faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross. We can confidently follow his footsteps. We can confidently run with him. We can finish well, finish this race for eternal life. Whose footsteps are you following? Make no mistake, Jesus says. If you let me, I will make you perfect. The moment you put yourself in my hands, that is what you're in for. You have free will, and if you choose, you can push me away. But if you do not push me away, understand that I will never rest, nor let you rest until you are literally perfect, until my Father can say without reservation that he is well pleased with you. This I can do and will do, but I will not do anything less, says our Lord. Amen.